had an agreement actually with New South Wales Service that it was going to be a clean game and they just come out throwing punches. Break their confidence, keep breaking their confidence. They've got nothing. They want to brawl, they don't want to play football. And then when they get a whack in the face, they're going to win. They have a problem with being hit in the face, so if you can jack them in the face, they get really pissed off. Cheers, Gaffy, we appreciate that, mate. And um, no worries, you're a gem, mate. Got the coaches shaking hands and oh, there's no love lost there. The agreement we had between coaches, between us and New South Wales Surge, that dirty little fuck just us, right? Go back down there and kick the ass. They've got nothing, they've showed that with their dirty work and stuff like that, so we're all on top of them, we're not scared. Bring it They faced off. We're going to see another one tonight because the maidens, I'll see you right there, they weren't happy with the way that the last game ended. They thought that the surge played a little bit dirty and not to the rules. And none more than Brett Coco Chambers, the head coach of the maidens, he thought he had what was called a gentleman's agreement. Now, I don't know what a gentleman's agreement is in any type of football, but he thought he had that with the surge, and that clearly didn't happen. The, the maidens left very unhappy, and Coco has said there is no gentleman's agreement tonight. Absolutely. Now, let's get away from that and talk about football for a second here. You've got the New South Wales Surge who are absolutely peaking at the right time. And I'll tell you what, because their roster, the reason they're peaking is their roster on the offense and defense is stacked. This is a great team. Bonnie Gillespie, she's healthy, 100% ready to go tonight, and she's also the league-leading rusher in the whole competition. On the defensive side of the ball, they've got one of the best secondaries I've seen, led by, I can't believe this, 18-year-old Bronte Zaya at the cornerback position. She's just out of this world. And the way she hits, the way she tackles, and the way she reads the play and, and tackles on the edge there, the Surge are going to do well tonight. Yeah, I mean, you, you talked about that Victoria Maiden squad, which is definitely the Cinderella team of LFL Australia. Certainly nobody expected them to be battling for a first place position here and possibly a Legends Cup run. For a closer look at the Victoria Maidens, let's go down to the field to the third member of our broadcast team, Sarah Godfrey. Thanks, Mitch. The Maidens are definitely trying to capture the magic they had when they upset the Angels here on opening night at the Maidens' go ship. But the wheels came off when they last matched up against the Surge, but the Maidens feel they're a different team right here in Melbourne. Melbourne has perhaps the best atmosphere in LFL Australia, and the Maidens will be fired up with this big home crowd behind them. The Maidens have said, and I can quote, we're out for blood tonight, so we can expect the biggest battle of LFL Australia. This place is buzzing and the atmosphere is electric. Back to you guys. Thanks, Sarah. What an incredible scene. When we return, it's the number one ranked New South Wales Surge versus the number three ranked Victoria Maidens. Kickoff is next. Back to Amy Park Stadium. It's the Victoria Maidens versus the New South Wales Surge. And before we get this started, let's go down to the field and the third member of our broadcast team, Sarah Godfrey. Thanks, guys. I'm down here on the sideline with head coach Brett Chambers. Brett, you are pretty upset last time we spoke with coach Jason Gaffey about not honouring your agreement to play a clean game. Do you have an agreement in place tonight at all? No agreements tonight. It's gloves off tonight. Whatever comes, comes. So, yeah, we'll forget about two weeks ago and we'll see how we go tonight. But I reckon um, she should be a good game. You sound very determined, that's for sure. Yeah, we're pretty confident tonight, actually. So, yeah, the crowd should be in for a real good game. So, we'll see how we go. And good luck to New South Wales Surge. Thanks. Back to you guys for kickoff. Oh, I say, it's a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> in the LFL. But no, look, Chambers, is, he's, he's a great coach, and he's just said exactly what I wanted to hear. Was, we forgot about the last last game. We're going to do it tonight. They're at home tonight. The gloves are off, and we want to see a good game. 
A very reserved and politically correct Brett Chambers <laughs> as we get this game underway. That's Mo Gaxiola deep into the end zone. Ooh. And that's Steph Davey bringing it out. An ill-advised return, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely, especially when you got Gillespie steaming there. She caught the XPT from Sydney to Melbourne just to make that tackle. Now let's meet that Victoria offense. Evie Wonder, center. Crystal Pelsevic, offensive line. Thalia Armand, tight end. Jamie Hall, wide receiver. Miss Luda, wide receiver. Jules Parker, running back. Penelope Kula-Reed, quarterback. Jules Parker's got to have a big game tonight for the Maidens. And Parker, the second leading rusher behind Gillespie of New South Wales. And oh. that's Penny Reed getting to the outside. Nice. Showing a bit, a bit of that mobility, not only arm strength, but great mobility. And she's going to be up against a tough New South Wales defense. Let's meet them. Allison Laws, defensive end. Boy Butler, defensive end. Monique Gaxiola, middle linebacker. Kate Capusta. Corner. Ronchizaya, corner. Amanda, AJ Jane, safety. Mallory Vogel Huber, safety. Ronchizaya, just 18 years of old, leading the leagues in tackles and interceptions. Now they're going to go to the right side, Victoria is, and that is incomplete. That was a second and four play, will set up a third and four. It's clean, it's clean so far. The surge is just letting the receivers know for the maidens. Uh, if the ball's coming your way, we'll be there to make a, a nice little hit on you. Absolutely, and Victoria's known to work the flats there. They've had a lot of success this year with Chelsea Klingen and Talia Armin. Armin, the second leading receiver in the league. Now a little pitch out to the right side to Jules Parker, the physical running back, and that'll be enough for a first down, John. I'm, I'm loving what the maidens are doing first up. They've got the edges again. They first went left, then they went right. Just a simple little pitch out. Nice blocking, one-on-one -on, -one on the edge. That's what you want Give you running back a chance. There's a look inside the huddle of the Victoria Maidens. And just to let the people at home know they're not looking at their watches. They've all got wristbands on and they've got the play. So when the coach calls it in, they can just look at the card and the play is explained. Offensive coordinator Brett Chambers vows a balanced attack tonight. We will see as Jules Parker is the second leading rusher, as I said earlier. There's a shotgun oh. snap in a little misdirection and fumble. Oh. Miss, Miss Luda gets on top. Now Penny Reed oh. picks up the ball. Monster block on the backside by Talia Armin. And Victoria averts major disaster early in this one. I'll tell you what, <laughs> you're so right, Mitch. Just a simple little reverse here, and they obviously haven't practiced it that much. It's, it's a little bit of nerves. Key block here. Boom! Nice shoulder there. Look at that block. That's what you do, because you need to stay focused. When the play breaks down, defense still has responsibilities. That was a loss of six on that play. Sets up a second and 16 at the Victoria 13, and there's Parker busting through the middle. Parker will go for 10 yards. Again, good game plan. They've gone left, they've gone right, they've tried to reverse, it hasn't worked. Now they're up the middle. Good calling. They've done some scouting here against the surge. Setting up very manageable downs here, a third and six. This kind of leaves your playbook open, John, where you could go to the pass or potentially look at another Parker run here. Absolutely. Now another snap and a handoff to Parker. This time they were keying on her. And that was Allison Laws, the newly oh. enacted. And now we've got a penalty. We've got a hanky on the field. We'll see what the call is here. Personal foul, Victoria number seven. Ten yard penalty. Remains third down. Our first call of the night, and it is an unnecessary roughness penalty on Victoria. And we expected that when we met with Coach Brett Chambers. Last game we had an agreement with the New South Wales Surge. They didn't hold up their end of the bargain. So this game, all bets are off. So Serge, be ready, because we're coming hard and fast. You see, that's what, I don't get that. You should just be coming hard and fast anyway. I'm not sure what this agreement is, just play football. I think it's an overall mentality of being tougher. There was coach David Coxey on the sideline with the Halloween mask on. Is that what it is? They've adopted this pirate mentality. And meanwhile, that was a third and 14 run by Evie Wonder. 
the inside tight end. Now that sets up a very crucial fourth and ten, John. Yeah, they've been running the ball well, and in the last couple of plays there, you've, you've seen the, the running back just hesitant. She's not hitting the, the line as hard as she needs to because they had surge on the ropes. They're driving the ball quite well. I mean, I was happy with the way with, with Jules Parker running the ball. They seem to have got away from that just a little bit now. Now a fourth and ten. What you would suspect would be a passing down, and there's another oh. handoff to Parker going through the middle. That's not going to get there for a rush of about four yards, and Victoria will turn it over on downs. I'll tell you what, I wish I was, uh, you know, on, on the coach's clipboard there. Why aren't they passing? I mean, is there something wrong with Penny Cooler Reed, the quarterback, or is she injured, or is there more faith in Jules Parker running the ball? I think it's a bit of both. Reed is definitely struggling this year, ranked only ahead of Jane Caldwell of Queensland. And now we'll get our look at the number one ranked offense in LFL Australia as Jacinda Barclay takes over. Charmaine Pavelka, center. Shari Onley, tight end. Quincy Hewitt, offensive line. Corbin McGregor, wide receiver. Taylor Mulvick, wide receiver. Bonnie Gillespie, running back. Jacinda Barclay, quarterback. No surprises here, Mitch. I reckon it's going to be Gillespie, Gillespie, Gillespie. And that is Bonnie Gillespie going for almost 13 yards. And look at her numbers on the season. She is the number one ranked running back in all of Australia. I think it was an 8.6 yard average. That's sensational. And it's, it's amazing to hear the Maidens crowd go wild for her. This Maiden defense is going to have their hands full. Let's meet them. Brie Rosado, defensive lineman. Rebecca Edward, defensive line. Rachel Tate, middle linebacker. Chelsea Klingen, cornerback. Steph Davey, cornerback. Mia A. Clifford, free safety. Tali Greenwood, strong safety. Tali Greenwood, I need to see a big game from her tonight to prove that she's not a one-hit wonder. That early penalty on New South Wales sets him back. It'll be first and 20 from the Victoria Check that, the New South Wales 17-yard line. And Bonnie Gillespie once again, this time only for six. Only. And coming up, pissed off. Just a nice little counter play. She starts off to the right, cuts it back to the left. I don't know, she, she, she's obviously a champion. She wants more yards than six yards. I know a lot of players that would be happy with six yards. Absolutely, chipping away, moving the sticks. Second and 14 now from the New South Wales 23. As Jacinda Barclay barks under center. Now a right side handoff to Gillespie. Nothing there. Cuts back to the left side. Wide opening. Chased down by Tally Greenwood. A touchdown saving tackle by Greenwood. That's what I'm talking about, Tally. You need a big game tonight, but gee, there was a nice, just a simple, nice little outside zone blocking here. O-line downfield, that's what you want to see. There was a sensational block here. The wide receiver on the backside just out of shot there. But I'll tell you what, if New South Wales can play like this as a team, this is going to get ugly very shortly for the Maidens. That could have been six very easily for New South Wales. Now a third and three handoff to Gillespie and Evie Wonder. From that DN position, she's had a lot of words back and forth all week on social media with New South Wales. And stepping up here where it counted, John. Evie just straight up with the blitz. I mean, it's Gillespie, Gillespie, Gillespie. And Evie Wonder was right there. You can see five solo tackles, five assists. She gets involved in the play. And that's what you want from somebody on defense to try and shut down someone like Gillespie. Now this number four ranked defense being tested early on a crucial fourth and three. Now a handoff to Gillespie. No, it's a fake in the flat. That goes to Shari Onley. Woo! And that should be enough for a New South Wales first down. There you go, Onley. Talk it up, talk it up. It's, this is one of the most simple plays in football, but we just love it. And tight end Shari Onley, five receptions for 28 yards. 5.6 average just on this simple tight end, five and outs. And that's what you want. It's like a safety valve. You've got Gillespie going left, bootleg it to the right, Great throw. And, and that brings us to the end of the first quarter. And it's been competitive. It's been chippy as we've expected. And it's going to be a battle throughout. 
Giovanni Gillespie leading the way early. Don't let a come around the side. Man, get up there, run for Tali, get up there, all right? A fired up Brett Chambers as we return to second quarter play here at Amy Park. He's taken it personal. It, it means a lot to him, and I think he, hopefully the, the, the players from the Maidens will, will fire up because he's fired up. Let's talk to another fired up player. Sarah Godfrey is with Shari Onley. Thanks, guys. I'm down here on the sideline with Shari Onley. Um, it seems like you and Evie Wonder had some words before. Is there some hatred there between you both? Um, who's Evie Wonder? No, I, I don't know, man. We're just out here playing our game. There's no individual stuff for me, so if someone wants to target me, then maybe I'm already under their skin. What's going on there? <laughs> okay, well, we'll see what happens with the rest of the game. Back to you guys. <laughs> that is sensational. What a great comeback from the former gladiator. I, I think she's got to know how to trash talk well, and she did it well without saying too much. Her and Evie Wonder are developing quite the rivalry. Now it's a first and goal for New South Wales. Jacinda Barkley handing off to Gillespie on the right side, trying to get to the outside. And Evie Wonder and Mia Clifford combined. That's good pursuit angle there from the Maidens. That's a, that's a nice job. Gillespie trying to get the outside. She's done a good job of that all year. But the Maidens so close to their, uh, to their own end zone. They've got it covered. Now a second and goal. That defense bending but hoping not to break. A little over seven minutes remaining in the second quarter. I love this sort of field territory here, Mitch. This is like play action, pass territory. Especially for this offense. Jacinda Barkley looking over the defense. Now a fake handoff again on bootleg to the left side, oh. and that's Quincy Hewitt. That is Quincy Hewitt, the left tight end, breaking open in the flat, and that will give New South Wales an early 6 to nothing lead. <laughs> And dancing with the Stars routine. Called it there, play action to the to the right, roll left. And gee, Jacinda Barclay, she just throws so well on the run. I want to give a give a shout out to their quarterback coach. Barclay is just throwing so well on the run. And you gotta also give their OC some credit, the offensive coordinator, Taryn Tan, who set up that play. You're right, you're right, Mitch, because they're, they're biting so hard on on um, Bonnie Gillespie down here in this area that somebody's going to be open for receiving. Now the extra point attempt. This will be a one point attempt and Jacinda Barkley just bulldozes her way in. And that'll give New South Wales a seven to nothing lead in a game that could easily decide who advances to the grand final. And New South Wales making a statement early on that four minute drive. They're happy about it too, nice work. A lot of people keying on Gillespie again, but bam, just a real quick hitter. That's what I like to see. One yard out, just give it to the QB. We're going up the middle. Big opportunity here, John, for Penny Reed and Jules Parker to answer. You cannot afford to fall behind to this team, this team being New South Wales with the number one ranked offense and the number two ranked defense. Just a solid club. I hope the Maidens don't think the game's over, though. You know, it's only 7-0. Oh, here There's the reverse. That's going to go to Chelsea Klingon getting to the outside. And we've seen that play a number of times this year from this offense. That went for about seven yards. It's the old play in the coaches book there. When they're blitzing hard, you run a reverse or a scheme. And Chelsea Klingon, look at that, an average of 15.5 yards every time she touches the ball. That's great stuff. Klingon is definitely the home run hitter of this offense. And that's Crystal Pulsevic getting hammered to the ground. And somebody gets boom shake the room. Big don't argue with the shoulder. That was a bit of a forearm by Mallory Vogelhuber, the one of the few Yanks in LFL Australia from Columbus, Ohio. Is that a traditional name, Mitch Vogelhuber from Columbus, Ohio? Or? Actually from Hamburg, Germany. Now first and 10 pitch out to Jules Parker on the left side, cutting back to the middle, and she's oh. going to lose the ball. Luckily for Victoria, she fumbled that out of bounds, and Moni Gaxiola just looks on and smiles. Just check this out. Great way to set up the blocks. Outside, cut it back in. Great job there, but you've got to hold on to the ball. It's the most important thing in football. There's a shot at Bronte Zier, the leading tackler of LFL Australia, and we sat down with her earlier. 
I'm hungry for the win tonight against Victoria. It doesn't matter what level of, in of intensity they're bringing, what emotions they're bringing, what crowd I'm playing in front of. We're hungry, we want it, we want it more than them. She's awesome, said only, only 18. She's leading the tackle count, but that does scare me a bit because if she's a cornerback, they're running a lot to the outside. Absolutely, and that's Jules Parker. He's only going to get about a yard on that play. That'll set up a third and one. Getting back to Bronte Zyra, she's definitely impressed. But to your point, you don't want a corner leading your team in tackles. Absolutely, absolutely. Or you don't want the safety leading your team in tackles because obviously they're getting 10 yards down the field before that safety can make the tackle. Now the first time that we've seen the wishbone, and Woo! that's Tara Silberbauer. She gets all the way down to the five-yard line. That's the first time we've seen her or the wishbone this season. Oh, my Christmases have all come at once. I got a 70 kilo fullback with a wishbone formation in the LFL. Love it. This is my type of football, Mitch. Just a wishbone formation, cut it to the left, bring it up right. Let's see more of that. Good call, Maidens. Silberbauer could be a great answer to Jules Parker. Seems to be a quicker back and hit that gap really quick. Very and now explosive. another wishbone look here. Whoa. Not sure what happened there. It looked like Evie Wonder just exploded way too early. Part of the snap, false start, Victoria. Five yard penalty, Demands first down. And that's what happened. It'll be a false start, a crucial false start, as it will back up Victoria to the 11 yard line now. Again in the wishbone to Parker on the outside. Go, go. Parker finding a gap. Woo! And Parker goes for about seven yards there. And now talking it up a bit with Bronte Zire. She can afford to talk it up a bit too. Look at that, four TDs. She's been the, the go-to running back, fullback. Again, the wishbone, they went left before, now they go right. Just nice wall blocking. I love seeing this sort of stuff. But just watch out for the counter. Sets it up very, very nicely. Now another penalty flag. Holden. Victoria number 14, five yard penalty. All Mercer and crew are busy tonight. That is another call against Victoria. Mitch, I've got my headphones. I'm throwing them on the ground. You cannot kill yourself with running like that with penalties. Now they're backed up to the 16-yard line, and there is the muscle. Jules Parker breaking through the middle. That went for about nine yards. Wait, we'll just check. There's no flags. Because like three plays ago, they should have been in the end zone, but they had penalties on it. Running well, but they should have been there five minutes ago. This would be a great territory for a play action pass as New South Wales seems to be keying on Parker now. Again with the wishbone. Evie Wonder dead set. And that looked to be a snap directly to Penny Reed. That was a scrum. That was the quarterback, Penny Reed, and now a little bit of fisticuffs afterwards. Mm. Guess who? Evie Wonder in the middle of that one. What's going on there, Mitch? I'm going to throw something out. There's a surge a little bit miffed, shall we say, that they, they haven't been running like this all year. Are they getting a little frustrated? Yeah, I don't think they faced a physical back like Jules Parker. Now a third and goal. And oh. there's another false start. That looked to be Crystal Pulsevic, the left tight end. Oh, why not? We haven't had a penalty all night. Let's have another one. Prior to the snap, false start, Victoria number 14. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Oh, if I'm Coach Chambers right now, that clipboard, I'm banging against my head. Your offense is doing awesome, but you're killing yourselves with penalties, guys. Come on. And this packed out crowd at Amy Park not happy with the call or this offense's execution in the red zone. Once again, third and goal, but that'll back them up to about the six-yard line. Seems like we've been at this end of the field all day, John. Yeah. But on the other hand, and we say, like, you know, with the maidens driving, Gene, the Surge have done a great job of holding them out. There's an inside handoff. That one goes to Evie Wonder, another Australian scrum. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, Mitch, cool to read. Oh, here we go, going to push and shove. And they got to be careful here, Wonder being warned early. Cooler Reed for me has got to do a better job after she hands the ball off. She's got to roll out, at least try and take one or two defenders with her to sell the fake. She's not doing a good job there because everyone's just keying on the middle. It's the two minute warning. Two minutes and that brings us to the two minute warning here in the second quarter. 
the physical battle we all expected is happening. Back to second quarter action here at Amy Park Stadium in Melbourne, Australia. A near sellout crowd. And now the Victoria Maidens fourth and goal. Inside handoff to Jules Parker and Chloe Butler off the edge. So who's read this all the way? Maidens have got to do a much better job sealing that end so that defensive end can't get to the outside. That's a shame because they were knocking on that door for about half an hour. That defensive end is Chloe Butler. And much like the birds are sailing away, so did that red zone offense. Jacinda Barkley under center now as New South Wales takes over. A right side handoff to Gillespie. And Gillespie gets out for about five yards. Steph Davey on the tackle. I want to see what the surge can do here, Mitch, because we've seen in previous games that uh, they can score from anywhere. Steph Davey there with six tackles. She's going to have to play a big part in this second uh, second quarter. But yeah, Serge can score from anywhere. Are they going to go hurry up and try and get this in the end zone real quick? Now a second and five from the New South Wales 11. Now a left side handoff to Gillespie cutting inside the middle and just dragging tacklers with her. That went for almost 18 yards. And Gillespie showing that power. Yeah, and, just, and also showing the smart. She, this, <laughs> This, this Gillespie's a smart running back. She sets up those blocks and then, bam, cuts it back. And Tolly Greenwood, slow to get up. She is that heart and soul of that defense. They can ill afford to lose her. Now New South Wales will take over first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. Now Tally Greenwood coming up from that safety position. Barkley under center. Looking to the right side to Kayla Molvog, and Molvog has it. Oh. Did she get in? What's the ref say? The referee is, he's indicating that's a touchdown, John. I want to see, did she catch it? And then number two, did she score with it? Oh, the Melbourne crowd, yeah, you tell us about it. Do we, where's the umpire? Oh, she's, oh, it's a scorpion. What a play here. This is what we call, this is what we call a Houston route. A Houston route, so the receiver does five yard slant, five yards up the field, and then five yards out. She's got it, it's a catch. Oh, there we go. We've even signaled the ball for you there, so you can sit at home. She definitely had possession, John, excuse yes. me, but it looked like she just did not get a chance to cross the plane. Absolutely. Steph Davey came up from that corner position and dislodged the ball before it crossed the line of scrimmage. That should not have been a score. 100% agree with you there, Mitch. Of course, New South Wales lines up quickly before you can challenge it. And here goes the Melbourne crowd letting you know about it. Definitely an avid fan base here in Melbourne. And they know their gridiron. That was not a score, John. Do you get that, do you get that uh, sort of crowd reaction back in the States as well? Not as vocal sometimes. <laughs> it obviously helps to have a almost sold out stadium here at Amy Park. Go you Aussies. Great route, great throw, great catch, but was it a score? You got to figure from the replay that Steph Davey absolutely dislodged that ball. But New South Wales certainly not complaining. And that, Mitch, that, that could be so huge. This has been such a tight game. It's only been 7 0 for almost you know, most of the game so far, and now it's 14. Is that going to come back to, to hurt the Maidens? Oh, absolutely. Anytime you give up seven points in a close matchup like this, and now two minute offense by Victoria, although they're letting this clock run down, not understanding this, John, you've got a timeout. You're down 14 to nothing. Why not take a shot here? Absolutely. I mean, look, go back to the, either the power running game and get those big yards or try and get some sort of pass, which we haven't seen tonight, Mitch. We, we've only seen, I think, one pass so far. We are down under 30 seconds in that handoff to Jamie Hall. And Hall will get 11 yards, but that clock continues to run. Will Victoria call a timeout here? Well, that's what I was just saying, Mitch, is, is they just got, I think, 11 yards on that run. Bam, pull a timeout, run it again. There we go. That's a good. That's good running. Good running, but I don't understand the logic, John, because you 
call a timeout here. Why not have called it after the Parker run? Absolutely. And re preserve yourself a good 12, 15 seconds here. I think you, people at home are going to remember too much. So much is going through that, that coach's mind about clock management. What play to call? Where are they on the field? Are they in the right spot? Now a first and 10 from the New South Wales 21. Reed in the shotgun, sloppy pass. Oh. And that is picked off by Bronte Zire. Zire brings it out to almost midfield. And Reed showing a little frustration. And perhaps we got a look as to why Reed hasn't been throwing the ball tonight, John. <laughs> You're inside my mind there, Mike, because I was just about to, I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> now I know why they're not passing. Got to step up and throw. I mean, that thing had a wobble on it. You could see from up, I come back to West and went to the wrong color jersey. She had time. There wasn't any pressure. Now 10 seconds remaining and a timeout for New South Wales. Barkley trying the right side again. No, she's going to try to take off with it. Still on her fleet. Gets out to about nine yards. Oh, I'll tell you what, Mitch, if, if, if Barkley could have seen Gillespie, Gillespie just ran a nice little flat speed out route was wide open. Just have a look, Bonnie Gillespie going to the left. Nice route, she is open. Just a little bit of pressure there. Barclay could not get out of bounds, so they had to use their final timeout of the half. That will allow them one more play, maybe take another shot at the end zone. Triple reverse with an option pass. Let's see if Victoria drops those safeties. Oh, Barclay going to try to run it up the middle. She clearly crossed the line of scrimmage there. That meant for Shari Onley, and Onley giving a little shoulder to Evie Wonder. 14 to nothing at halftime. And we will be back with halftime festivities here in Melbourne, Australia. A sense of desperation setting in the Victoria Maiden locker room as we return to halftime festivities here at Amy Park Stadium in Melbourne, Australia. Mitch Mortaza alongside John Rowe. And John, a Victoria Maiden team that I think a lot of people thought would be a little more competitive in the first half of this game. A lot of people, you, me, we thought it was going to be completely different. I think they got zero yards passing. They've attempted to pass. One was intercepted. They do have 83 yards on the ground, which is a, a nice job. But I tell you what, Mitch, they're not going to get in the red zone. They're not going to get in the end zone unless they get out of this one-dimensional offense. Absolutely. And on the other side of the ball, you have New South Wales, who's done exactly what they wanted to do in the first half of this game. Uh, surge being surge and doing it well. They're controlling the clock. They're giving the ball to Gillespie, which sets up Barclays passing. I think she's three of four for this half. And she's doing a little West Coast chip and, chip and chase, scoop and score, just throwing the ball because Gillespie's doing her job and everyone's biting on the run. Defensively, they're bending but not breaking. I think it's Mallory Voldehuber. She's had a great first half. Absolutely. And the only scoring that's come in this game has been from the New South Wales surge. It all started with this commanding four-minute drive and it was capped with Jacinda Barkley finding Quincy Hewitt on this six-yard touchdown pass. Then with only 59 seconds remaining in the first half, it was Barkley once again finding Kayla Molvog on this controversial touchdown that has us at 14 to nothing at halftime. And John, now let's take a look at those first half stats. Oh, Mitch, it's simple as it before. Maidens, zero yards in the air, 83 on the ground. They've got to get it done and get it done through the air. The surge, just keep giving Gillespie the ball, and that'll set up Barclay and the short passing game. We are one half of football away. Will it be the New South Wales surge clinching a berth in the grand final, or will Victoria mount a comeback? The second half kickoff after this. We are back to third quarter action here at Amy Park Stadium, now known as the Maiden Ghost Ship. Woo! And these maidens are going to have to rally down 14 to nothing. Let's look at the running backs tonight. I'll tell you what, look how evenly matched they are. It's 43 yards versus 41 yards. It's just, this is a close game. And now we're going to go down to the field with Sarah Godfrey. Thanks, guys. I'm down here on the sideline with Steph Davey. Your whole season comes down to two quarters of play left in the game. What do you need to do in the second half? 
We just need to execute. We've been training so long for this. We know exactly what we need to do. We didn't start the way we wanted. But this second half is ours. We've got this. This is ours. Good luck for the rest of the game. Back to you guys. <laughs> that was that's a great question from Sarah. I didn't really put it in the context. It's, your whole season now is just another half football to go. Oh, no question. You're looking at Western Australia sitting at 2-1 and one right now. If New South Wales wins here, they'll be 3-1. and one. They'll earn the bid to the grand final. And really, the only team on the outside looking in is Queensland at this point. So very much so a must-win scenario for Victoria. As Mia Clifford lines up to get us started here in the third quarter. Nice high kick. Good kick. And Bonnie Gillespie doing the honors. Still cutting back now. Finds a little seam to the left side. And she'll bring it out to about the 15 yard line. Always fighting. That was a great kick. Gillespie, <laughs> Gillespie's feet just a little too fast for her body. Good return though. Lucinda Barkley. Haven't talked about her much tonight when she's had the opportunity. She's capitalized, finding Quincy Hewitt to open the game. And then Kayla Mulvog right before the end of the half. Do you not do look at three or four, 36 yards. She's done well off Gillespie's running. Now a first and 10 at the 15. Barkley back in the pocket. Tries the left side of the field. Nobody there. See what happens, John. You talk her up, and she misses the receiver in the flat. Oh, you know, a lot of things. That, yeah, okay, Mitch, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the receiver, I think, just got caught up there. So, obviously, uh, Barclay throwing to an area, and the receiver wasn't there. Excellent point, John. What a lot of gridiron fans don't realize, quarterbacks throw to a spot, not necessarily a receiver. Absolutely, absolutely. So that could very well have been the fault of the receiver there. I'll tell you what, Mitch, I love the play call first out. Of the half time, let's go downtown. Now a second and ten. Barkley with the right side handoff to Gillespie finding a hole and just powering over Mia Clifford. And that went for almost 11 yards. As I said, Miro Williams has done a great job with this offensive line. The center blocks down. The tight end, Shari, she blocks out. Look at that, takes it to the ground. That's how you keep blocking till the whistle. That's what you want from every single player on every team. That has got to be the best front line in all of LFL Australia with Charmaine Pavanka at center. Quincy Hewitt at tight end and Shari Onley at the other tight end. Just a power front line. Barclay back to pass now. Looking over the middle and oh. intercepted or noted she hopped that. Yep, she trapped it. Mia Clifford coming up from that corner spot. Good throw by Barclay, but there, there it is on the ground there. Both receivers on the left and right, they got caught up. They, they looked like they weren't running 100%. Something wasn't right there. A second and 10 play. you got to wonder, Victoria's got to come up with a stop here. Force a turnover or a four and out. And give your offense a shot here. Maidens would want that one back. They'd, they'd be in different field position if they got it. Now almost at midfield. Left side handoff to Gillespie. Gillespie goes for about five yards and Tolly Greenwood on the stop. Just a nice little off tight end of the left side run there. Got to be thinking of the mindset now from uh, head coach Jason Gaffney. He's, he's, he's got the tempo of the game. It's only 14 zip. You know, this game could be 14 zip for the rest of the match. So is he just going to keep it on the ground for a while and just let the clock run out or is it going to be ball control? Bit of tactics going on here, Mitch. Absolutely. Now a third and five. A quick slant to Corbin McGregor. Nice. That should go for about four or five yards. Not sure if that's going to be enough for a first down. That's my favorite play, pass play in football. Just a simple slant pass. Receiver takes one step forward, 45 degrees in, and the, and the quarterback just hits him on the slant. Great pass. Corbin McGregor leading LFL Australia in receptions through six weeks of play. Now a critical fourth and one at the Victoria 15-yard line. Barclay going to try the quarterback sneak up the middle. Oh. And we've got another penalty. That was Barclay for about six yards. There's the yellow hanky. A little after pushing by Evie Wonder. 
This looks to be on New South Wales. Well, that's a rarity. From the legal procedure, it's illegal to rush when there's less than three yards to go outside the red zone. It's a five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. Oh. Mitch, what was the call there? That looks to be an illegal rush inside the red zone. Now a fourth and six. That'll back it up to the Victoria 20. See the crowds get in. It's great to hear. Very vocal tonight supporting their team at the ghost ship. This is very much so a major rugby atmosphere or a major soccer atmosphere. Great to see this many fans come out. Now they're going to take a shot on the right side. Steph Davey defending. Great job by Davey to cut off the inside. The lanky corner for the Maidens. Nice job, but I'll tell you what, I want to see Barclay put that ball down the field further. Don't underthrow it, overthrow it. Now you want to give it an opportunity for Maidens to get an interception there. Now Tally Greenwood's been mic'd up. Let's listen in. Tato left straight away. Tato left straight away. We're right up close. We give them nothing. Yeah. It is so important, Evie and Beck, that you own these A-gaps because they will come charging through them. Mia, get up here. They're going for one. They get none. <laughs> Great example of the leadership on the field by Tyler Greenwood. He has definitely stepped up into that Ray Lewis type role. Now a first and ten. Victoria will have a shot. And Jules Parker returns to action. That'll be ten yards for Parker. New South Wales just simply does not have an answer for Parker. Yeah, especially, I mean, it's like we're going back to the, the first quarter of the game. It's basically just Parker just around the outside to the right. Or to the left. This is great stuff. Oh, what are the, what's the crowd going on about now? Now a first and ten at the New South Wales 20. High oh. snap. That's a handoff to Parker on the left side. Breaking to that left side. And she went for about 11 yards on that one. Bread and butter for the maidens. Run right, run left. Get to the numbers. Oh, here we go. And there's the other bread and butter for the maidens. The critical penalty inside the red zone. We've seen that all night, John. Uh, what's the call? Holding Victoria number six. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. As one of my coaches used to say, say, Mitch, you're killing me. You're killing me with the penalties. I'm going to call that Meadow Lee from now on. If it's bread and butter, that's yellow. That's a bit of marge on the ground. What is the Maidens doing? Come on. First and 15 from Victoria, 25, and this crowd is growing antsy. I think I'm hearing the Great Australian call of, I'm blind, I'm deaf, I want to be a ref. Again with the wishbone for Victoria. Little inside handoff, that one goes. Oh, oh and she broke it. Evie Wonder broke it on the right side. And that'll go for 10 yards. It looked like she was held up in the scrum and then just broke to the outside. Yeah, great second effort. Look at the big pile there. And then bam to the outside. Nice job. I think I mentioned it before, Mitch, in the second quarter. That New South Wales, they've still got to stay in their lanes. They've got to stay in their alleyways because if, if Maiden's busted to the outside, they're not going to be there to stop that run to the touchdown zone. Evie Wonder, someone that hasn't been highlighted that much offensively. Certainly a great interior blocker and pass rusher on defense. There she is, Evie Wonder now on the right side. And that went for about five yards. It'll be first down, Victoria. And Wonder having some success. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is great play from the Maidens. Sue's doing a good job of holding not too long, but Mitch, this has got that feel there. I'm watching a few of the high snaps for the Maidens. That could be critical. I'm watching New South Wales over pursue. That could be critical. I mean, the, the score could stay the same, or somebody could score real quick. I like the physical play of Victoria against this number two ranked defense of New South Wales. Now a first and goal at the New South Wales 10-yard line. Again with the wishbone and Jules Parker. That goes for about three yards. Amanda James on the stop. Yeah, with the wishbone here, Mitch, you've got 
the, their major success so far has been all the fullbacks and running backs going the same way. They're doing a couple little tricky things now where you've got the backside running back going off to pick somebody else, and it's not really working. They've got to get that team together. But you've basically got seven players and within, you know, five yards, and we're going, let's rumble. And what's happening is New South Wales is stacking the line as well, as you can see here. So this would open it up for play action, but no, they're going to stay to the ground with Jules Parker to the right side. That's what I'm talking about. And Parker gets about four yards all the way down to the New South Wales three-yard line. And that will bring us close to the end of the third quarter. Looks like we might have time for one more play here. Let's see if the, the Maidens are going to try and slam it in before the end of the quarter. A vital series of down for these Maidens. Six seconds. Third and goal now from the New South Wales three. That was Reed up the middle, the quarterback. She gets down to about the one yard line. And you want to talk about a major play coming up when we start the fourth quarter, John. It'll be fourth and goal from the New South Wales one when we return. Welcome back to Amy Park Stadium in Melbourne, Australia, as we are in the final act of this major showdown. You've got the Victoria Maidens with a critical fourth and goal at the one. And that looked to be a yet another false start, John. My headphones have just gone flying across the room. There's the margarine. Offense, five yard penalty, the Maidens fourth down. Viewers at home, Mitch, can't hear me banging my head on the desk. They've, the Maidens have been there several times tonight. Now fourth and goal back at the six. Inside handoff, that's not going to get there. Evie Wonder, she'll only manage about a yard, and they'll turn it over on downs. That is a critical turnover on downs. Oh, Mitch, we're going to have to go to a furniture store because I've just broken this desk. I cannot, it's a, look at this, it's a full out blitz. Surge is coming. They blitz everybody. Why go up the middle? Run it out to the right, run it out to the left, or even better still, shot put it over for a pass. There's no one to block it. There's no one to tackle it. Coach Brett Chambers really struggling with his offensive scheme tonight. And you can see New South Wales is just converging against the run. They do not believe Victoria can beat them with the pass. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm flabbergasted, as Rex Moss would say. <laughs> flabbergasted. Was that a snort, John? It was. It's an old Australian commentating rec rocks mess up. It, when he got excited, he just snort. <laughs> Welcome to Australia. A first and ten run, that one by Jacinda Barkley. And now we have one of our lead blockers mic'd up tonight, Shari Onley. It was blocked like we never blocked before. Keep going. Hey, baby. <laughs> Mitch, <laughs> that's what we call you. We call it American Fool. That's a pancake. Tara only loves pancakes. You know, she's been doing a great job tonight. A great physical tight end. That was Jacinda Barkley again with the quarterback sneak up the middle. That'll be enough for a first down. And this is where this Victoria defense needs to tighten up. Now again, a first and ten as New South Wales now has the ball near midfield. It's, it's, I know we're only, you know, six minutes 42 to go, but I'll tell you what, that the Maidens, how many times have they been in the red, the red zone or the green zone, the scoring zone? How many times have they been, been inches out? This game coulda, woulda, shoulda. If you're counting, three times. Three times they've been in the red zone, have had zero points to show for it. Now a first and 10 from the New South Wales 23. That's Bonnie Gillespie. 
And Gillespie still motoring on the right side, oh. still on her feet. Apparently just stepped out of bounds. Well, the refs called it. And that's 11 yards. Tack that to the tally. She's got 60 yards tonight. And she's done it the hard way. Have a listen to this. Love it. I'll tell you what, with Gillespie too, she's always falling forward, getting those extra yards. A physical back. And there is Jacinda Barkley finding one of her favorite targets, Kayla Molvo. Just a really nice little simple slam pass. Tonight, two catches, 29 yards. Longest has been 21. What a great average, 14.5. That's what you want out of your receivers. She is their deep threat. And once again, she was the one who scored that controversial touchdown right before the half, but right now it is all New South Wales on offense. Back to fourth quarter action here at Amy Park, and before we get started, let's go down to Sarah Godfrey. Thanks, Mitch. I'm down here on the sideline with coach Jason Gaffey. By the looks of things, it looks like it's going to be a WA versus New South Wales grand final. How do you guys match up to the Angels? Uh, we're not playing the Angels, we're playing the Maidens. We've got to finish this game first. Oh, yeah, well, we've got to finish this game first. When we finish this one, we'll worry about the Angels then. OK, sounds good. <laughs> back to you guys. Oh, look, Jason Gaffey and I go way back, but I'll just say to Gaff, relax, Gaff, relax, take a chill pill. <laughs> You've got this. It's like 5.06 to go. You've been in control all night. You're moving the ball. Have a Coke and a smile. An interesting question by our own Sarah Godfrey. That would be quite the matchup, WA versus New South Wales. And there's Kayla Molvolg again. And that went for about three yards. Just a nice little dump off pass over the top. That's something I haven't seen for a while. Or oh, Gillespie, what's going on with the body? More action after the play, and that brought out a flag. Oh, the Meadow Lee's on the ground again. Our referees are not putting up with much tonight. Paul Mercer and crew have there been busy. The play. Well, there's a first. The play, pass interference, offense number three. It's a 10 yard penalty. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness number 10. Both penalties will be enforced. It's 15 yards of total penalties. Both penalties against New South Wales and the team leader, Shari Onley, begging Bonnie Gillespie to keep her head in this game. No, 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 no. That's not our game. That is not our game, baby. This clock is ticking. This clock is ticking, and we are winning. Flush that shit. There we go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Shari's got it. Coach gaffey has got to get it. The clock's running down. They've got this. Second and 22 now. All the way back to the New South Wales 22-yard line. Quick dump off. And that looked like it skipped to Shari Onley, but she caught it. And Onley goes for about six yards. I'll tell you what, I'm so impressed with Onley, the way she can catch those low thrown balls for such a tall player. He gets now low really, really well. Good hand position. He's done well tonight. Now a third and 16 if Victoria can hold. Perhaps their offense gets a shot. And keep in mind, there's always that onside kick to try to tie this game. Now a third and 16 from the Victoria 22. Barkley going to try the right side. No taking off, just losing her footing. And she's been complaining about the wet paint at midfield all night. And it looked like she just stumbled on that paint. I wouldn't be complaining about that, Mitch. But I'd be complaining, just give yourself a little bit more patience. You had some time to the left. Don't have to rush your pass. Jacinda, obviously a good friend of mine. I'm trying to save her. Okay. That was it her being clumsy? That yeah. was the paint at midfield. Oh, I'll tell you what, that trap door has been opening up all night. <laughs> now a fourth and 16. We talked about this. If Victoria can hold here, they still have a shot. Oh, and Mitch, just to remind people, there's no punting. They've got to go for it. 
This is four down territory. Gives Victoria an excellent shot if they can hold up here. Barclay back to pass in the pocket. Deep shot down the right side, and that's intercepted by Steph Davey. Go, Steph. Davey's still on her feet. And Davey will bring it out to about the 16-yard line. Two big goal line plays tonight by Davey. And both underthrown by Barclay. She's got to get that ball over the top to the receiver. Don't throw it under. There is a defender there. Throw it over the top so either your receiver catches it or it goes out of bounds. There's an old saying, three things happen when you pass and two are bad. Now Penny Reed back to throw. She's going to try the left side. Oh, that's way late out of bounds. We should see the Meadow Lee thrown up in the air. Reed almost taking out Sarah Godfrey, our sideline reporter. And now we've got a penalty. Did I see Sarah she put the shoulder in? After the play, late hit out of bounds. Number 15, New South Wales. 10-yard penalty. That is a big down. penalty when Victoria needs the yardage. I'll tell you what, I, we haven't heard much about the gentleman's agreement, but I'm actually impressed with both of these teams tonight. We've only had, I think, two personal fouls. There hasn't been a late hit out of bounds for a long, long time. And this Victoria packed outhouse finally having something to cheer about. Ball at the New South Wales 17 and Jules Parker on the right side. And Parker goes for 11 yards and lowers the shoulder against Amanda James. And that should take us to about the two minute warning. A great looking drive by Victoria. Good field position, they stopped, stopped New South Wales with that great pick, ran it back. But I tell you what, it's a great drive again. What are they going to do again? And that does take us to the two-minute warning. And Steph Davies' interception has changed the momentum. Back to LFL football night. And do we have a matchup for you next weekend? We go to the Gold Coast. Ty Emery in the Queensland Brigade versus these Victoria Maidens. The Maidens are going to be bruised and battered. They'll have to do some good recovery work. I tell you what, the Brigade, they want to win. First and goal, handoff to Jules Parker. A bit of confusion, gonna try the right side and Allison Laws chases her down. John, that looked like a bit of confusion. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was, Mitch. It was like the Statue of Liberty play, you stop there, do a stutter step, 360 degree turn, run to the outside. Come on guys, you're close again. It's second hand goal, let's get it there. There is absolutely no confidence in Penny Reed because this should be throwing downs here. Another pitch out to the left side, Jules Go. Parker. And Parker goes for six yards. And the clock continues to run. Victoria using their only timeout. And that timeout will now stop the clock and set up a third and goal. Clock starting on the snap, fumble. and that's a fumble. The red zone is kryptonite to Victoria. And I'll tell you what, as I said, we said before, Mitch, New South Wales is just bring everybody. Why don't, why don't the maidens spread people out? So rather than having seven on seven within five yards of each other, spread it out so there are some alleys for the ball carrier to run. Absolutely no adjustments at halftime of this. I think this is one of the poorest offensive called games I've ever seen. And, and we don't know the story. Why isn't Cooler Reed throwing? Why? And they're down to one final play here. This is the fourth and goal play to Jamie Hall on the outside. And she's not going to get there. And that is the end. Sarah Godfrey can now ask Jason Gaffey how he's going to match up against <laughs> WA. There's too many people on the outside. They've got, the surge have got all the lanes covered. And as I said before, Mitch, they don't have a lead blocker. You need those lead blockers when you go to the outside. You can't do it one on one. I don't care what level of football you're playing, you've got to have the defense off balance. And when you've thrown the ball all of twice the entire game. And one of those has been a pick. One of those have been an interception. What do you think the defense is going to do? They're going to key on your run game. The old saying is pin the ears back and go, go, go. And here's the last 40 seconds. Jacinda Barkley are just going to rush it up the middle. And that should do it. New South Wales just 30 seconds away 
from advancing to the first ever grand final for LFL Australia. At the ghost ship, they've done it in somebody else's house. Very impressive to come in in front of this packed out stadium. Keep that cannon quiet. Oh, and the, the, the cannon could have gone off four times tonight. So many trips into the red zone. And Tally Greenwood and that Victoria Maiden team highly, highly frustrated. Charmaine Pavalka telling Evie Wonder about it. Certainly did not expect this outcome, John. No, no, it's, it's, and they're, they're, I've got a lot of questions to ask. I think we might need to get Sarah Godfrey in a couple of weeks there to answer those questions for me, to ask the coaches, find out why we didn't pass, why we didn't get out of a different formation, why we didn't spread the field. This was a coaching collapse, I think, more than anything for Victoria. And New South Wales did what they had to do. They kept to their strengths. Bonnie Gillespie, a strong defense, and Jacinda Barkley just managing that offense. And now New South Wales advancing to the first ever grand final, simply awaiting their opponent now. For Mitch Mortaza, John Rowe, Sarah Godfrey, our producer Gino Payne and director Patrick Rulick, thank you for joining us for LFL Football Night.